Welcome back, you with the lawn engineer. You know, when I started doing these videos a couple months ago, I thought, huh, oh, maybe I'll do 10 or so, I'll probably run out of things to talk about. But, uh, as life goes, things keep presenting themselves. So, what's on the workbench today is this little uh, generator. Um, so we had uh, some, some bad thunderstorms, high winds, uh, tornadoes, I don't know, three years ago, and we lost power for a significant amount of time. Of course, everyone was sold out of generators, so I went to Harbor Freight, and this is one of the last ones they had in stock. And lo and behold, um, it served me for six days of power outage, keeping the bare essentials going. Um, so I've, I've kept this thing around. I pull it out every once in a while. Um, it's a little two-stroke. Run it for 15, 20 minutes, uh, maybe every six months. It says to do it every three months on that. But anyway, um, this time you can see what happened. So uh, our, our pull start broke here. Um, instead of just replacing it, I'm gonna try something different and see if uh, we can make starting this even uh, easier than it already is. All right, we're gonna start by just popping off this cover here. Looks like something else is holding it on here. There's one behind this cover, sneaky snake. So we got to take this off a little bit to get access to that. All right, so that takes our whole pull start assembly off here. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on the YouTubes to tell you how to fix this. But I'm gonna try something different here. All right, so we got that out of the way. Now we just have to re-secure our gas tank here. Had a bit of delay there. Um, had to uh, fix up the spark plug wire. I didn't have any spark because it uh, the piece of junk end there. So if you're looking at generators at Harbor Freight, don't think you're gonna run them for 20 years and not have to do anything on them. But anyway, whole separate topic. Let's see if uh, we can get it started with our method here. I'm surprised this isn't working. I don't, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Alright, so it works. I'm happy with that. I uh, just know I have to go to a faster speed there. Um, however, I'd love to leave it like this, but I can't because um, that is a duct for the cooling air. So you can see here, the flywheel here basically is a fan and it brings air in across this side and, and directs it over these cooling fins on the engine here. So we can't just leave that off uh, without the risk of overheating. So let's take a look at that thing and see how we can modify it to make it work. Okay, what we have to do here is take out this rope start mechanism, and then put a hole in here so we can access this uh, nut holding the flywheel on the crankshaft. So we can get our, our drill in there for our new electric start, and we should be good to go. All right, I took the uh, rope spraying uh, recoil mechanism out of there and I'm left with this and it looks like this is held on there with some spot welds. Um, so I might, it looks like there's only two, three, 
five of those, I might just drill those out and see if I can uh, pop this thing up. Well, that didn't work exclusively, so let's peel the sticker off. Uh, nothing obvious under there. Just gonna try enlarging those holes around those spot welds, see if that does the trick. Hey, look at that, did the trick. So I've got that off now, and all I need to do is uh, put a big hole in the center there so that we can uh, put our socket in there. Well, that looks like hot garbage. Uh, let's see if we can find anything in my toolbox, a bag of tricks here. I do have this grinding stone I've had around forever. It's more for a die grinder, but we'll put it on here, see what, see what we can do. Would you look at that? Perfect. All right, not terrible. Let's get this thing on there. All right, there you have it. Let's go test it again, make sure it runs.